Hello scientists, this is Dr. B and we're going to walk through the uh, lesson 3.2 on protein structure function um, and this is especially for iPads. Um, so everything should work on your iPad. We learned in unit 2 that deer mice have melanocytes that specialize hair shaft cells with the receptor proteins in the cell membrane. So here's the cell membrane of a melanocyte. You can see it's nice and dark brown. Um, this is for a dark brown mouse. It's producing mel eumelanin um, to make the hair of the mouse nice and dark. The receptor proteins allow a signal from the hormone outside the cell. So here's, the, here's where the hormone would land. Um, the, the hormones hang out in the extracellular space, land here on the receptor, and then that causes the receptor protein to break open the signal protein, and then this kind of turquoise comma-shaped protein goes off into the rest of the cytoplasm and signals the cell to make melanin. We observed that the receptor protein is not the same in all mice. Remember, in light mice, we found that this receptor protein didn't bind the signal protein, and it didn't break open and send the signal to the cytoplasm, resulting in no eumelanin and a lighter mouse, the fur color being very light, which is great if you're a mouse on the beach because you are camouflaged on the beach and the hawks don't see you as easily. Um, but it's bad if you're a mouse in the field, which is a darker background, and the mouse see you more easily if you are light. Also, in Lesson 3.1, we identified where and how the receptor proteins are synthesized. Remember, proteins are made by connecting small molecules called amino acids into a long chain, which then fold up into a particular structure based on charges and cross-linking. In this lesson, we try to figure out how changing the shape of a protein might change its function. We return to the model we created at the end of Lesson 3.1, Describe the ways you connect the cell production of eumelanin and pheomelanin from unit 2 to the synthesis of the receptor protein in lesson 3.1. Well, uh, I tried to go back to my model, but I had erased it. So I'm going to give you a picture of the model we're going to do later in this lesson 3.2, and you can kind of fill in the blanks. So I did this on a Jamboard. I copied some of the... Um, icons from the website and I'll put that website both uh, on your lab sheet and in the comments for this video. So I copied some of those icons from the, the Concord web page in here to kind of show you what's going on, what we know so far. We know that the dark mouse has dark melanocytes that's because um, the DNA is reading to produce, the DNA produces RNA, which goes to the ribo ribosome in the cytoplasm outside the nucleus. So these ribosomes exist outside the nucleus. They work with the RNA. The tRNA pulls in an amino acid, pulls those amino acids into a particular order as determined by the RNA, and that produces um, the set of amino acids that make the receptor protein. The receptor protein for dark mice is a slightly different shape than light mice. This receptor protein will bind the signal protein here, like I've shown here, and produce eumelanin. So though this whole sequence up here, dark mouse, dark melanocyte with DNA that makes eumelanin, is for the dark mouse. Now we have a sequence for the light mouse. Down here, light mouse has different DNA. Their melanocytes look differently. They're lighter because they don't produce eumelanin, that darker pigment. They only produce pheomelanin. Their RNA is different because their DNA is different. The ribosome reads the codons differently. One codon is different. We find out that that is a different amino acid that produces a slightly different shape here. You'll see it better um, as we go through this lesson. And that slightly different shape doesn't bond the signal protein. So it doesn't create eumelanin. I've crossed it out here. 
and it only creates pheomelanin. This is not a complete model. It should have a lot of words and arrows um, connecting the pictures with ideas and concepts. That's your job. You're welcome to take a screenshot um, and I will also provide you the um, share the Jamboard link and you can make a copy and work on Jamboard or you can take a screenshot here. Um, you can take a screenshot of the Jamboard and work in Notability. So now that we've looked at question one, let's look at our simulation. Use the simulation to review. Place each mouse into the Explorer pane. So dark mouse goes there, light mouse goes there. We're gonna zoom in. Remember, we're going to the skin cells. We're zooming in on a hair shaft. We're looking at um, cells that are around the hair shaft that produce melanin. And then we're gonna zoom in here to the membrane level. I'm gonna do the same thing for this mouse. Zoom into the hair shaft and we're zooming into those cells around the hair shaft that give the hair pigment. We're gonna zoom even further into the cell membrane here. And we're just gonna compare and contrast here. When we look at the melanosomes, when we measure the melanosomes in each case, this melanosome here for the light mouse isn't producing any of this eumelanin. We'll measure one here. And you can see it's producing both pigments. That's the key difference between these two cells. Dark mice produce the dark pigment. Light mice don't produce that dark pigment. They only produce the light pigment. That makes sense. Light mice, light pigment, dark mice, dark pigment. The difference here is that these receptors are binding the signal protein, they're breaking it open, and that comma protein that activated signal protein is headed towards the cytoplasm to tell the cell to make this dark pigment. You can see here in the light mouse, that signal protein never bonds to the receptor protein here. It never gets broken open, it never bonds. There's something wrong here, that um, something that doesn't function to make this dark pigment in the light mouse. So, What's the driving question for this lesson? What do we need, there's a hint, what do we still need to know about receptor proteins? We really need to know what's going on. How is this receptor protein different from this receptor protein? Why isn't this one doing the same thing this one is? Why isn't it bonding the activated, uh, why isn't it bonding the signal protein and why isn't it splitting open the signal protein? The hormone will land here, but it won't bond the, the other signal proteins and it won't break them open. So the cell doesn't get the signal to produce eumelanin. So you can write your own driving question, something about the difference in the signal molecules. So return to your prediction about what causes the difference in receptor protein function between light brown and dark brown mice that's page four of lesson 3.1. Restate your prediction here. You may revise or rewrite your prediction if you have a different idea now. So you need to go back to page four of lesson 3.1 and see what you predicted. Um, did you think there was going to be a difference in receptor protein function? Did you think the receptor proteins were gonna be different? Um, question five is an experiment to test your prediction. Your hypothesis, what do you think causes the difference um, in the, the signal proteins? How would you collect the data? What's your experimental design? How will collecting this data help you test your hypothesis? So I'll help you out here because this is a bit uh, um, of a stretch for high school students. So your hypothesis, we need to know what is the difference in the signal proteins between light and dark mice. The data we're gonna collect is the DNA sequence of each mouse. 
or if we can get more specific, we'll just collect the DNA sequence of that particular protein, but that means we have to isolate that protein. What's our experimental design? Well, um, yeah, we'll say each type of my. Uh, so, method, we're going to collect both types of mice, light and dark, and sequence their DNA to look for differences. explanation. How will collecting this data help you test your hypothesis? Well, if we look at the difference in the DNA, at the signal, whoop, sorry, receptor, protein gene can give us a clue about how the proteins are different. Because if we know the DNA sequence, we can um, hypothesize about the RNA sequence RNA often undergoes some trimming and some restructuring after it's transcribed and before it's translated. Um, but we can look at some of the differences and see how that results in a difference in the protein. It's not an easy experiment to do, but it's uh, a possible experiment. You can't do it in a high school lab. What makes the receptor proteins different? Read this aloud to the part. Uh, the order or sequence of the amino acids in the chain is what determine how the chain folds up to make the spinal chain of the protein. We talked about that in quarter one. We talked about how the hydrophilic protein amino acids like to be on the outside of the protein and the hydrophobic amino acids uh, represented by yellow and black here tend to go to the inside of the protein. So I've kind of put the blue for hydrophilic on the outside of this protein structure when I was folding it and put the yellow and black towards the inside. That's just a review of how proteins fold. It's the order of the, you know, those amino acids. And we've talked about how there's 20 different amino acids and they go together like beads on a chain, but the beads can be very different. They have um, places they can cross link and uh, hook up with other beads and it can get very complex and kind of messy very quickly. So to explore the differences in the receptor proteins further, we're going to use a protein synthesis simulation. We're given a small part of the DNA sequence, DNA sequence for amino acids 60 through 79 for the receptor proteins to synth synthesize. So the following D DNA sequence include the nucleotide that is different in dark brown versus light brown mice. This difference is in bold. You can see there's a C here and a T here in the light brown mouse. So what we're gonna do is copy the dark brown mouse DNA sequence above and paste it into the simulation at right using the button for step one of the simulation. Make sure to copy all three lines and you have no extra spaces. Follow the steps in the simulation to make the corresponding chain of amino acids. Once you've built the chain, you can use the unfold protein and refold protein to help you examine the protein more closely. And then we're gonna take a snapshot of the dark brown mouse. So let's copy this. Let's enter a DNA sequence. It's confusing because you can't put in the original sequence, but you can put in the dark brown mouse sequence. And once you've put in the dark brown uh, mouse sequence, you can hit transcribe. 
and you can see it's zooming in on the cell nucleus. It's going to find the DNA, the particular gene that we want to, on the DNA, it's going to find the section of the DNA, the gene for that receptor protein. Um, there's DNA polymer or RNA polymerase is going to come in and um, make an RNA here. Remember, we're transcribing, we're making RNA. So we're making the RNA. And that RNA is eventually going to travel to the cytoplasm once it's complete and find a ribosome. And then that ribosome is going to work with tRNA to make. Uh, to line up the amino acids into a protein. So now we can translate. That RNA can head out to the cytoplasm. And find a ribosome. And you can see the amino acids being lined up in the correct order. The tRNAs here in green are reading the codons, those groups of three letters on the RNA. And as it goes along, um, it's bringing in the amino acid that's, that's specified by this codon and connecting those amino acids in a particular order. And that order is determined by the RNA. And once all the amino acids are in place, the protein will fold in a specific shape. That shape is very specific to its function. If it folds in the wrong shape, it doesn't work. So let's pause. Um, we can take a snapshot here. And then we go through this whole process again. Um, we need to go get the light mouse sequence here. We just put in the dark brown mouse sequence, and now we need to put in the light brown mouse sequence, which is only different by one letter. And we're gonna see how that works. In terms of making a protein. So we'll transcribe it. It's going to transcribe uh, much the same way, except for that one nucleotide. There's just one nucleotide. These little letters, A, G, T, C, on the DNA and RNA are called nucleotides. There's only one nucleotide that's different. Um, so it's going to make slightly different RNA, which is going to be read slightly differently um, you're going to get a different amino acid in that that one codon is going to be different so there'll be one amino acid that's different and so the protein will fold into a slightly different shape and that slightly different shape will affect the protein's function if a protein has a different shape it's not going to work if we take our protein here and one of these hydrophilic amino acids becomes hydrophobic, it's going to try to dive to the middle of the protein and we're going to get a different shape. That different shape might not work and in this case it doesn't. There's lots of genetic disorders where um, one or two differences uh, in nucleotides of the DNA cause a protein to be dysfunctional and not work and that can cause health issues. In this case, it's not a health issue for the mouse. Um, so let's just take a snapshot of the light mouse protein. And the differences probably aren't going to be huge here when we look at these two proteins side by side. But if you look carefully, the way the protein is folded is right here is different. Um, there's different amino acids kind of on the outside here. 
Um, there's a different kind of tail right here on the light brown mouse. So the way the structure of the protein has changed. So review your two snapshots and describe how the DNA difference influences the amino acid chain. Well, I would say there's sort of a bigger chunk here of hydrophilic amino acids. So a bigger section of hydro, what I think are hydrophilic, I don't know for sure. Amino acids are, are creating uh, an arm of the protein that does not exist in this is in the light brown mouse just above in the dark brown mouse. So you can kind of see oh I meant I meant the dark brown mouse. So if you look at the dark brown mouse, it kind of has about five proteins here kind of sticking out as an arm. This only has the light brown mouse only has about three of those proteins sticking out as an arm. These look like they're maybe hydrophilic because they're hanging out with the water in the cytoplasm of the cell. These are um, also look hydrophilic, but there's not as many of them creating that arm. And this green protein, green amino acid here, or the protein that, the green that represents a particular amino acid, is in a different place in this protein respective to the other amino acids than it is here. So you can write about that green, uh, the amino acid represented by the green dot here. It's in a different place. So let's go to the next page here. So how does this difference influence receptor protein function? We'll now find these amino acid chains in the membrane proteins. Recall that the region of the DNA you synthesize correspond to amino acids 60 through 79. Click and inspect, and then click on a receptor protein in each mouse. So we'll hit inspect, and we'll do that for this mouse too. and then examine amino acids 60 through 79. You can use the right and left arrows on your keyboard to move one amino acid at a time. Identify the two, identify the amino acids that's different between the two receptors. So our number 10, our mission here is to find out the one protein that's different between the two receptors. So let's start chugging our way through with the slider here. So we know to start at 60, we know not to do one through 60 because we only looked at 60 through 79. And we know that difference exists between 60 and 79. So we can click through, here's 59, here's 60, here's 61, 62, 63, they're the same. I'm, um, I'm on 64 here and 64 here. They're both thorine. 65, 66, 67, oh, 67 looked different here. Let's go back. Yes, 67. Um, you can see that there's arginine on this protein. And on the receptor protein in the light mouse, it's cysteine. And that comes from the DNA. There's a C here and a T here. So just one nucleotide that's changed in the DNA causes a chain in amino acid and causes a difference in shape. You can see the shape here is slightly different than the shape here.
So we know the amino acids that's different is 67. And we know it's arginine in the dark mice and cysteine, oh, we don't need the and in there, cysteine in the light mice. So in the information panel, navigate to the amino acid that's different. Record the names and properties of the different amino acids below. Well, we just did that above, so you can copy those. Accept the properties of the amino acid. You know the different amino acids. This is arginine and it's charged. Here's the property. Arginine and charged. This, for the light mouse, it's cysteine and the property is hydrophobic. So charged generally means it's hydrophilic. It likes to be on the outside. That amino acid will go to the outside of the protein and uh, interact with water where this hydrophobic amino acid will go to the inside of the protein and not interact with water. So having very different uh, amino acids here with different properties changes the shape of the protein. So we just looked at these answers over um, in the information panel. So I already wrote the answers here. The show DNA checkboxes for each mouse. Examine the codon, the three letter code, for the acids you look for the amino acids you found. So I checked amino acids, or I checked DNA here, and we can see that this is CGC for uh, amino acid 67, and this is TGC. So there's just one difference, as we saw on the previous page. So you can do number 13. I've kind of given you an example there. You spot the difference on the receptor and show where the amino acid is. Question 14, I've given you a word bank. How might the difference in amino acid 67 cause the difference in the receptor protein shape? Pay attention to where the amino acids are different and where the protein looks different. Summary summarize your ideas about the differences in the box below. So you should use the words protein, shape, amino acid ch changed, function changed, and the property of the amino acid changed from charged <clears throat> to high Hydrophobic, so not charged and not wanting to interact with water. All right, this is the end of part one of lesson 3.2 of Deer Mouse Fur Color, and we'll be continuing in the next video. See you then.